uh, the principles with uh, uh, of therapy would be that you want to identify how dysfunctional is the right ventricle and depending on that one uh, patients have low risk average risk or high risk of, of uh, increased mortality within the next year or so the patients that you consider high risk in general that means patients that have significant right ventricular failure or dysfunction those are going to be patients that you have to start on the strongest medications that we have available which are parenteral intravenous or subcutaneous but that is in combination with other medications uh, 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 medications called prostacyclines iproprostenol or triprostenol Guidelines say very clearly that the highest risk of the patients is not to waste uh, about, they should be on intravenous parenteral prostacycline therapy. And then, then you know. You also know, so you know in medicine it's actually a particularity, you know very well what to do with extremes, the problems start to be in the gray zone area. So the other extreme is the patient that has this particularity, it's a physiological par particularity in their uh, pulmonary vessels. Uh, by give, giving them vasodilatory drugs in the cath lab during the catheterization process, you can completely normalize their hemodynamics or you normalize their hemodynamics. These are patients that are calcium channel blocker responsive, this is how we call them, and you treat them with very high doses of cardizem or, or nifedipine, for example. It's a rare event, so that is about five to six percent of the idiopathic pulmonary hypertension which is about five people in a million so that's a really rare, rare event but when that happens um, it's actually a, a you know a great subgroup phenotypic subgroup of patients because you uh, you can control their uh, disease and they have very good uh, long-term um, uh, survival as well Sometimes they become non-vasoreactors, you need to follow that up, but in general that is, a good, is regarded as a good prognostic sign. Then you have in between patients with low and average you know, degree of risk of progression and death. In these situations what we usually do, we do combination of medications. You, you know, sometimes we start monotherapy, then we add, uh, depending on, and this is what we've been doing in the past, that was the, the, the old strategy do one drug, wait three, four months and reassess the patient. If they don't do well, you add another drug, add another drug until you end up on the subcutaneous or intravenous continuous parenteral drugs. And if that one is not working, then you go on, uh, on to transplantation. Nowadays, we started to use more and more upfront combination. We are at the level of dual combination, but I'm sure very soon we're going to hear about upfront triple combination therapy, and who knows, in the future the strategy would, would change to, to using more aggressive approach at the beginning, trying to gain control of the disease and disease progression, and, uh, and uh, hopefully improving the long-term survival and outcomes.